Hi, it's Anthony the Quacks here. Um, we're going to do something today on, on print and uh, strings. Before we do that though, I just wanted to quickly show you something, uh, some resources that you might find useful. Uh, I've set up a little website, I'll put the uh, the address on my comments to this uh, tutorial. It's basically just raspberrypi.co, but with a Y. On there you can see a few links, some of them you'll be aware of, but uh, if you haven't checked out Liam Fraser's YouTube tutorials, they're really worth a look. Uh, if you click on Python at the top there, I've put a page with some useful links to some tutorials that, uh, that I found helpful. Um, so all of these have either got a book that you can download for free or that you can read online. So that's very useful. The other thing I've put there is a link to the python.org homepage. If you haven't had a look, really worth having a look. Um, if you go onto documentation, there's all the documentation for Python 2 and Python 3. So, you know, it's, it's a good idea to have a look at that um, if you have any problems. Okay, so what I thought we'd do then is just start off using using some basic things in print that some of them we've had a look at before, but I just thought uh, it might be worth going over some of them again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save most of the uh, things that we do today in a little Python program, and I'll put a download link to that as well in the comments. So the first one that we have talked about before, but I'll just quickly go over it again, is the new lie escape sequence. So if you want to put in an escape sequence, you just put the backslash N gives you a new line. Uh, and that should print a new line. So if you just want to format your printing a little bit rather than doing separate lines uh, in your code, you can do that. Another one is uh, the tab escape. Um, code which is just a backslash T so that just pops in a, a tab space for you. Um, another one that we've used a little bit is this multi-line printing idea so it just uh, you need to use a triple quote um, and what happens then is that it just prints out exactly what you type So for instance, if you want to do a little pattern of some kind, um, I'm just going to build a little pattern with some zeros for now. Whoops. exciting but it just gives you the idea <laughs> it's not ideal is it but still that'll do the job so and I put my triple quotes in and close my co it'll print that out exactly as that uh, as I typed it so you can actually use that to make some kind of quite nice uh, ASCII art or, or things that you want to do when in your display in a program. Okay, so um, a couple of other things uh, that I think I may have mentioned before, but you can actually use some operators on strings. So if I go for if I say I want to print badges times five, it will print badges, 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 badges. Um, if I say I want to print um, I can use add, we've done this before, but oh, that's funny. Yeah, uh, so if I say apples are oops,
I'll print that out as a as a string. Uh, it'll it'll link those up. Okay. Now there are a lot of really good uh, things that are built into Python, which are called string methods, and you can find a lot more of them if you go onto the documentation that I mentioned there before. But let's say that I'm gonna I want to put in a a name, or maybe I'm running a program where I can't, somebody has to enter their name. So if I just print that out to the console, it's going to say name is Mr. Bean. Now obviously that doesn't really look like um, a title, so uh, you know somebody's name normally would have capital letters. So if I say name dot title, it'll print it out formatted correctly with a capital at the beginning of each uh, of those two words. Um, if I want to, for some reason, that'll also work as well, by the way, if the person has made some even more strange mistakes. So if I say, if I do that, obviously that's kind of odd, nobody probably would do that, but if I say name.title, it'll sort that out for me. So that's quite handy sometimes. Um, then there's another one which is probably slightly less useful, but um, if I wanted just to swap around the upper and lower case ones, I can say name dot swap case, which will just swap them over. So anything that was previously a lower case will be an upper case, and vice versa. Um, also, there's another one which is quite a nice one. So I've got a little string like that. If I say um, message dot upper, it will convert that all into uppercase. So there might be times when you want to use that. Um, very similar to that as well. Um, sorry. <laughs> if you've got uh, a string that's all capitals. Um, well, that doesn't look right. Looks like they are shouting. Um, so if I go msg lower, it converts everything into um, lowercase. Um, there's another thing that as well that you can do just to check uh, if um, I'll just stick to a short name here. Um, So if I create a string that says that, and I say message dot starts with, and then I pop in a capital R, it'll tell me whether or not that message starts with a capital R. So it does, so it's going to say true. If I say message ends with Z, it's going to say false. So that's quite a useful thing. So I can't remember now if we've talked much about these, the true and false, but basically these are just Boolean operators. Um, in other words, the, the logic operators. So if I type into the console something like 1 less than 2, it'll tell me that's true. If I say 1 equal to 5, it'll say, sorry, my favourite mistake, <laughs> it'll say false. So that's what's happening with, uh, starts with and ends with, it's just returning you a, a a boolean telling you whether or not it's true. Another thing that's quite useful when you're when you're doing something like this is um, you can do a thing called slicing. So if I want to, I can say, right, I want to print. Actually, I don't need to print it because I'm actually it'll just output it anyway. So I can just say msg, and then I can open my square brackets, and if I type in zero it will just give me the first character. If I want the first few characters, I can say 0 colon 4 and it will go up to that. In fact, if I'm starting in the beginning, I don't even need to put in the 0. I can just put colon 4 and it will do this. Sorry. Um, Sorry, my typing's gone haywire. OK, 
Okay, so it will print out the, uh, the first four characters. Um, that will also work at the end of the string as well, so I can go msg 10 colon and it will give me the last couple of characters. Um, or I can do a little slice in the middle, so I can say msg 8 11 and that will just give me the last as it happens, the last letter of uh, the first word and, and, and the space and the first word of the uh, second word. Sorry, the first letter of the second word. Um, one thing about strings is that they are immutable. So if um, that means I can't actually change a string. So I've got MSG there. If I say MSG 0 equal to um, T, it's not going to work. It's an error. Um, just out of interest, if we did it as a list, So if I now print the first item of my list, I can actually change that. So now I've got jello. Um, but I can't do it with strings. Strings are immutable. So if I want to do change that string, I'll have to change it. A different way. So I could, for instance, say, um, so I've got my message there. Um, if I want to make it, I could say message equals message plus e, and that will work. Um, or if I wanted to do something a bit different with it, I could say, um, and that's basically just creating a new string from the word apple plus uh, the last four characters of, of the string already. So you can't directly change what's in a string, but you can easily build a new string out of the bits that you want. Okay, there's a couple of other ones as well that I wanted to talk about. So if I want to find whether, sorry, where, um, if, if a character, first of all, let's say, is in, uh, or a string of characters um, is in my string, I can just say, Pionet message and it will say true because that's there. If I want to find out where a particular character is in the string, I can say um, msg.find. Let's say I want to find out where the first occurrence of the letter i is and it will give me the index, so that's 7. So if I then go m message just to double check that. Yeah, 7 was an I. So that's just a useful thing as well if you're looking for a particular value um, inside a, a string. Um, let's say that I've got a string that, the, like, as you know, that when a user enters a, a, a number, it's actually stored as a string. So let's say they've entered, um, if I want to enter 65, if I want to check if that's a digit, I can go is digit. And that'll say true. Um, if, for instance, a actually equals you smell, and I say a is digit, it's not going to be happy with that at all. 
Um, but if I say A is alpha, oh, I think that might be because I've got uh, an exclamation mark in there. Um, let me just try another one. Um, Something like that. Okay, that's true. Um, there's another one I think which actually would cope with the fact there's a punctuation mark in there, but um, as I say, there are a lot of string methods available. You might want to go and have a look for those uh, yourselves on the documentation. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do today. So basically, it's just uh, just to say that you know there are a lot of built-in string methods. Very, there's lot, and there's a lot of built-in things that you can do with print, so it's worth having a check to the documentation because it might be that something you want to do uh, is already available uh, to do in a simple way. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks very much.